Now in this next segment, I'm gonna to speak to one of the great leaders of the moment, the president and CEO of Gucci, who is making bold commitments on behalf of the planet, but certainly also on Gucci. But since he couldn't join me here in Copenhagen, I'm calling him up in his office in Milan. Ciao, Marco. Ciao. How has it been for you these past, you know, eight, ten months for you, for Gucci, in Italy? My, my experience has been the same experience of many, many other people. I mean, the, the big difference that I, I, I had is that I stopped flying after 40 years, more or less. I mean, <laughs> that is, uh, for the first time, I realized how much tiring is flying because when you do something you just need to do it and you don't realize and, and your your body is always in jet lag and it's, it's, it looks like it's part of the game in reality is not part of the game so that in a way has been a positive the fact of not flying any longer the, the negative of course is you, you don't have the chance to to interact with people uh, uh, visiting people, uh, motivating people. Um, on the other side, you know, Italy has been the, the has been the first country affected after China, uh, and it was com everything was completely new at the beginning. It was kind of a chaos at the beginning. I think uh, everybody reacted very, very well. I mean. Um, I think all the Italian people, I think they, they did a magnificent job in trying to, to, to protect um, the families, the, the, the person close to them. So, you know, it's, um, it's, been, a, it's been a journey. I mean, I spent much, much more time with the family. That was not the case in the past. So uh, there are some positivity in a way. I mean, we cannot say positivity in this case, but we have some... <laughs> some uh, <laughs> Beautiful things happening as well. I mean, considering the problems that are quite uh, quite dramatic that we are seeing uh, we are seeing uh, elsewhere. Yeah. What about for the business? How did how did you steer through that? No, the, the business is uh, is being uh, you know as you, as you know. I mean, having a company that is uh, mainly based on um, uh, physical shop, brick and mortar shops, there was a certain moment where we had like 90% of the shops closed. So uh, there's, I mean, there's nothing that, that you can really do than try to protect your people and to make sure that, um, that when, when, because there's always been this kind of dilemma when, when the company goes well, right? We, we, everybody's talking about values, talking about principles, protecting people, people first, et cetera, et cetera. The real, you know, the real, um, to me, the, the real, um, you know, proof is when you have problems. Has there come anything positive out of COVID in terms of how the business is set up or things you're doing in a different way where you think this disruption is appreciated as well? Ah, um, listen, the, um, the, uh, we decided, the, the, you know, the, the, differ the difference that we, we are seeing is that, of course, smart working created the different ways of interacting with different people at the same time. And, and of course, I mean, we were able to, uh, you know, to, to save a lot of uh, time in traveling and and especially before before the covid i mean we always thought that um, we needed to go at that speed we needed to fly every day we needed to go to the office every day because that was part of the game we were doing one show after one show five show a year six show a year and that was the rule and everybody was especially in fashion everybody was saying that this model was uh, uh, old etc but nobody was really changing it so and and the COVID obliged us obliged us to to rethink about the way in which we interact, we work uh, from a you know a smart working standpoint. But not only um, we decided, for example, and we are not the only company that did that, to reduce the number of shows from five to two. And that, of course, you can imagine the different impact that that can have in terms of people moving, uh, you know, pollution, everything. Uh, and of course, you need to, to reinvent the way in which you deliver the products, et cetera, et cetera. But I, I think it's, it's something positive. And you can really give the possibility to the creative director to be more creative because, in, in effect, how can you be really creative when you do five shows in a year? It means like every two months. What kind of creativity you put together? I think during this um, COVID crisis, what has been very um, clear to me is that um, societies, companies, even individuals were able to change a lot of behaviors or things that we used to do when a crisis hit. 
but it also became very clear to me that there was a painfully visible action gap between what we were able to do in the COVID, but what we're missing doing on the climate side. So in, in, in your perspective, what's, yeah, what, what, what's your thought on how, how can we use sort of a momentum like this to sort of also make more pro proactive actions towards climate? To me, what, what, what really st struck me is, is, is uh, there are some data. I mean, um, in 2020, we are going to reduce the emission of 8%, more or less, the what they told us. Okay, good. And uh, the economy was in complete lockdown. Mm -hmm. So, it's not achievable if we don't change things next year, for sure. If we go back to the Paris Agreement, in order to maintain the, 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 the temperature growth uh, below 1.5 percent, uh, 1.5 Celsius uh, grades, um, in 2015 we needed to uh, decrease uh, the impact of 3.6 percent every year, but because we lost five years, now this this number is 7.6, 7.5. So it means that if you don't take action immediately, um, I mean there's a, there's no time left, and we cannot uh, hope of another COVID next year in order to reduce the emission, right? Because in in a way you're gonna be you're gonna be uh, you're gonna be sick. Uh, the economy is not growing, so you need, we need to find a way to 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 impact. So that that. And again, it's, you know, I, I'm from a generation where I was not very, you know, my priority was not the climate. Because when I was born, I mean, that certainly was not the priority of the, of the world, of my priority. So I learned, I study, I, I listen to scientists, I listen to people that know much more than myself. Because it's, um, you know, it's like, um, it's like COVID. I mean, you cannot listen to someone that is, uh, is taking a, a cafe in a bar in, in, in Italy. You need to, to listen to scientists, right? So it's the same thing here. And uh, so that's the reason why we are, we are always trying to evolve the way in which um, ourselves in Gucci uh, are able to, you know, to reduce our, our impact. So we, we, we did many initiatives in the past, we are launching new initiatives uh, um, now. Um, and I think that at the very end, for what I, I read in the last few months, a few, I mean, few years, I mean, at the end, the, 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 if, if I have one point that could be interesting to for me to keep in mind is, is that when we talk about nature we, with, and, cli and climate, we think of nature in terms of a victim of the climate. In reality, nature can be an actor to change the climate. It depends very much how you use it and what kind of transformation you, you do on the, on, the, on the agriculture. So there are many ways. Elaborate more on that. I think that's interesting. And up to last year, up to I mean, recent times, um, what we were doing in Gucci, because I mean, we launched this uh, challenge, uh, the carbon, uh, the carbon, uh, no, CO carbon neutral challenge, um, where where we were not able to avoid reduce uh, um, um, the, the, the the impact, we need, we wanted to offset. That is was a way to protect through uh, the, the, the the Red Plus certificate, protect the uh, the biodiversity. Okay. Now we are moving uh, in a new kind of strategy. Is a, now, a natural, a natural climate-based solution, where not only we protect, but we try to restore as well. And we are investing in uh, um, in Honduras in in the growth of, of mangroves, the mangrove, uh, man the right pronunciation, mangroves. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because they absorb yeah. they absorb ten times more than the trees. So they absorb uh, um, carbon emission 10 times more than the trees. So that is a way not only to avoid the emission, but also to take away CO2 from the atmosphere. And together, and together with that, so, is, um, so protecting restore, there's also the, the other part that is managing. And there where we can really give an impact is Gucci because our supply chain is quite widespread uh, everywhere. And, and, and managing, managing um, means that we want to switch um, our supply chain to um, regenerative agriculture in the sense that uh, we want to make sure that our farmers, they move out chemicals from their soil. Uh, because, I mean, at, at the moment, we have just 60% of the soil that is left. And in 40, 50 years, no, no topsoil will be, will be left any longer, so no food will be left any longer. So we need to, to act on that. And the way in which we want to do that is to make sure that if they are able to switch to regenerative agriculture, they're able to 
absorb carbon emission in, in the land, they're gonna create revenue because they can sell the credit of this carbon. And also the, the, the kind of uh, wool or cotton or leather that they're gonna produce for us is gonna be in a way less, um, you know, more sound, let's put it this way, because it's, it's coming from something that is not impacted by chemicals. So You're becoming a farmer. Sorry? Sorry? You're becoming a farmer. Yeah, exactly, exactly. I was a farmer when I was a kid. My, my dad had a farm, <laughs> a small one. But it, it, I think it's important because in, 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 certain, in certain ways, um, we don't have the direct impact as Gucci. Gucci is a, is a drop in the ocean. We cannot, we, I cannot think that we are gonna impact dramatically the planet. But certainly, if ever, that's the reason why I, 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 I launched the Carbon Neutral Challenge. Because the point is, today what I listen is that everybody setting target 2050, 2060. I mean, 2060 I will be 90 years old. I will be probably managing Gucci. But, uh, <laughs> but if not, I cannot leave uh, you know, to my successor targets that are not mine. Doesn't make any sense. And also it's gonna be too late. I think people, they need to understand, they, they, they need to move for what they can now. In whatever they can, any single thing that they can do is something useful. And there are so many people, so many scientists, so many people that are studying that can help us, can help you to, to really define what kind of possibility you could have for any single industry that you are in. It, it comes back to the situation that I, I, I really believe that, I mean, one single company cannot do, it, cannot do enough. And so I need to leverage the name of my company because the Gucci name is known everywhere. So, and uh, you know, and being associated with Gucci, I think would be also fun, right? Nice. And you do something that is good as well. So I, we, we, lobbied, we lobbied a lot, we, we contacted many, many companies. We have uh, SAP, Lavazza, Real Real, um, Levine Sources. Of course, everything started like second semester of last year, so everything stopped because of the COVID. Um, but so the carbon neutral channel in itself what, what means we we are engaged as a company to try through redesigning our processes to avoid reduce etc all the impact and then where we cannot um, where we cannot uh, avoid we're going to offset offsetting is uh, what we, we were discussing before Either is, yeah. is either protecting or restore or managing through the regenerative agriculture. So it's a transformation as well. It's not just uh, I pay the money and, and I clean my soul. It's something more profound than that. And um, so, the, the in a way, I understand that we should not be distracted too much by the COVID on the climate, because the climate is still there and will be there. And the fact, I th and, 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 and we cannot be healthy in a, in a planet that is not healthy. So, and there's, there, this is a fact, I mean, and, and all this virus or this kind of things comes as well, because the, 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 I mean, the planet we are living in is not the, the, you know, healthy enough. So how do you balance also being a company that aims to grow? Right? I'm assuming that within, within Gucci and within caring, growth is an aim as well. So how do you balance growing with also you know, that growing impact on planet using resources and, and emissions and so on? What's yeah. your thought on that? Listen, that, that, is, that is the big question in the sense that, I mean, we, we, we want to grow, we need to grow because we more, more, the more you grow, the more you hire people. I mean, we have, uh, we hired in the last five years 10,000 people, so 10,000 families working. So it's always a trade-off between planet and people. That, 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 is, uh, that, is, uh, that is the point. Uh, but, but from the moment in which we started, um, and, and uh, the, reason, the, the, the way in which we measure that, because, we can talk about process, we can talk about everything, but then what, kind, what are the figures? What are the, the numbers? How do you measure that? So we, we created um, in Gucci, uh, started from caring before, the uh, environmental profit and loss, where de facto we measure for any activity that has an impact on the planet, either carbon emission or uh, use of land or water, etc., which is the impact, so we give a, a value 
to, the, to this impact, and we track that throughout the, uh, throughout the years. So in terms, of, if you take a baseline of 2015, so without the growth, we decreased the impact of 39%. That is, it means that all the activities that we are doing are, are, are amazing. So I mean, reusing materials, uh, switching from uh, uh, regenerating materials in all the um, palladium accessories, etc., using a scrapless methodology in order to avoid to, to, to use, to tan uh, leather that you don't use, etc., etc., etc. So all the processes that we are doing uh, are going in the right direction. Unfortunately, we grew in the meantime. For, fortunately, fortunately, we grew in the meantime. But the beauty of it is that in 2019 versus 2018, the company grew, uh, grew uh, I don't remember exactly, but 20, 19% to 20%, but the total impact decreased 5%. So despite the fact that we were growing, the impact that we had on the planet was, was reduced. So it means that all the things they are putting in place are working, going the right direction. So re we really redesigned the company uh, in order to make sure that we have the right impact. Of course, we have an impact. And, and for this reason, the impact that we are not able to avoid and reduce, we're going to offset in the way that we, we were discussing before, especially regenerative agriculture at this point, not just protecting. What are you most optimistic about in the moment that we're in? What gives you hope for where we are? I, I really believe that the new generation, the new kids, um, they are super strong. They have values that are more strong, stronger than the one that we had, at, at least I, I had when I was a kid. So, and since the federation of, 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 this, uh, of these passions can really help us going forward, then, and I really believe, I really hope that they are going to understand more than us that all this division, all these boundaries, all this nationalism, all this stupidity that is across the world. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot. Ciao, ciao, ciao. Thank you, ciao. ciao.